An important question to ask. What is the outstanding balance on a loan after some of the payments have been made? There are several approaches. One approach is to imagine resetting time after each payment so that each payment corresponds to t equals zero. For example, a five-year loan has payments at t equals one, two, and so on up to 60 if we're measuring time in months. After the t equals 12 payment, we reset the clock so the payments will be at one, two, and so on up to 48. And this approach allows us to use A angle N to compute the balance. For example, you borrow 135,000 at 3.5% annual interest convertible monthly and make payments of 606.22 for two years. What's the remaining balance on the loan? So we note that the payments for T equals one, two, three, and so on up to 24 were made will reset the clock. So the payment at t equals 25 becomes a payment at t equals 1, which is 24 less. This would make the payment at t equals 360 a payment at t equals 336, which is 24 less. And so the balance would be 606.22a angle 336 at three and a half twelfths percent interest. And we compute. Now, notice that you've paid 24 times 606.22, or $14,549.28, but the outstanding balance has only been reduced by about $5,000. And that's because most of your payment, when the balance is this large, goes to paying off the interest. We can adjust this approach if the borrower misses one or more payments. If there are only a few missed payments, it's easiest to compute the interest separately and add it to the present value. For example, because you splurged on food and heat, you miss the t equals 12 and t equals 15 payments. Find the outstanding balance after two years. We already found that if you made the regular payments, the balance would be 129, 728, 28. The missed payment at t equals 12 accrued interest for 24 minus 12, 12 months. So its value at two years would be while the missed payment at t equals 14 accrued interest for 10 months, so its value would be, where we round these values up so the bank doesn't lose money. And so our outstanding balance would be increased in addition to whatever fees the bank charges for late or missed payments. In an effort to help customers borrow more money, banks and credit cards might offer variable rate loans. For example, a credit card company might offer an introductory rate of 1% annually for a year, and, uh, well, there's some fine print, but nobody ever reads that. You should probably read the fine print. For example, suppose you put $1,000 on a credit card with an introductory rate of 1% annually for a year, but the rate will go to 24% annually afterwards. Suppose you want to pay the balance off within two years. During the first year, you'll pay $50 per month. What will your monthly payments be during the second year? We'll assume monthly compounding of the interest. So the first 12 payments will have value of 50 a angle 12 at 1 twelfth percent. Suppose the balance after the first 12 payments is B. This balance would have a present value of V to the 12th B using our usual V equals the reciprocal of 1 plus the interest rate. But B should be the value of the remaining 12 payments, P, A angle 12 at 2%. So the 1,000 we receive now should be the same present value as those 12 payments at 50 plus the remaining payments. 
which are discounted for the 12 months. And we can compute these values. 50 A angle 12 at 1 12th percent will be 1/2 while P A angle 12 at 2 percent will be 1/2 This gives us our equation, which we solve. And since it's important for the credit card company to make money, we'll round up.